Hi, I'm Jennifer, and this is my testimony. So um, I grew up in what seemed to be a normal home. I'm the middle child. I have an older sister who's a physician. Her husband's a physician, I'm a physician, and my little sister works in the big city for an advertising company in the HBO department. My mom is a nurse, and my dad is a computer engineer. Sounds pretty normal, right? But when you actually look into the years, the days, the hours that I actually lived, you see something very different. So now that I'm adult, I understand and see that as a child, I lived in fear. Um, and fear makes you do some crazy things. I remember as a kid, I watched The Exorcist and asked the why. That's a good question, I don't know. But I watched the movie, and I remember one of my sisters came stampeding down the steps, as we always did, just acting crazy. And I immediately thought of the scene in The Exorcist where she's walking down the steps backwards, and I about lost it, and I ran out of the door at 10 o'clock at night into the darkness to just never stop running and escape The Exorcist. And if you think about it, which one's safer? A little kid running outside in the dark at night or being safe in a home? It's a good question, but fear, again, makes you not think right. Or when I was a teenager, I remember riding my bike with one of my friends and a butterfly was coming for my life, like my whole life. And I literally turned my bicycle to go into an oncoming car to avoid the butterfly because I have the worst bug phobia. And Jesus is gonna help me get over this. Um, but yeah, fear does not make you think correct. And for most of my life, I lived in fear. I grew up in a very dysfunctional home. There's a lot of turmoil and tension. And I was also sexually abused as a child. And that instilled some deep-seated roots of fear. Um, I feared not being loved and not being wanted. I feared never being able to start a family of my own or have a home that was filled with pure love and genuine happiness. I feared men, I feared that I would be hurt. And that left me feeling unworthy, useless, not pure. And I ended up being in one relationship after the other and all the little boyfriends instilled all the fears that I already had in me. They cheated, broke my heart, and left me feeling emptier than I was before. And I remember in medical school, I told God, all right, I am done with the toxic relationships. I'm gonna wait on you. I'm gonna wait until you show me the godly man that you have for me, that loves you, honors you, and lives his life for you, and respects me. But at the same time that I was saying these prayers, I was still coddling and nurturing my fears, allowing for them to grow. So I found myself repeating this cycle. I found myself in another bad relationship and because of that deep-seated rejection spirit that I had, I thought that I needed to move quickly when I heard God say, this is the one. I thought I needed to secure this before the person knew of the unworthy, sexually abused, coming from a dysfunctional home, Jennifer, and want to leave me. So I ended up marrying this individual and at the age of 26, I was filing for a divorce. It's funny because you would think that that would be the end. Um, I found myself emotionally ab abused, spiritually abused, financially abused. Um, but I can now look back and I can say that that was actually one of the best things that ever, the best lessons that I ever got came from that time period. Um, it forced me to sit down with God and truly let him love me truly give him my fears, my shame, my guilt, all the things that I experienced during that very rough season. And I can now say that this verse is so true for my life. What the devil used as evil, God turned it around for my good. And, you know, someone can look at this and say, oh man, like, that's the end for her. There's no hope, there's no turning back. But I would say at the point where I hit rock bottom, I found God, the unshakable rock at the bottom. I, I learned to know the love of the Father. 
Because during those tough moments of shame, guilt, and really having to confront my fears, those fears that developed as a child, God showed himself true. He showed me that when I hit rock bottom, I will forever land on him, the unshakable rock. I learned that sometimes you have to go through those humbling, breaking experiences to really know the faithfulness of God, to really know how much someone needs him. And I needed him. I need him even now. Because at that time, I was prideful. I, I was saved at 15. I thought I knew the Lord. I was writing blogs about Jesus and how he saves. And I was leading Bible study. And I thought I had God figured out. And I didn't. And I remember there was one specific moment that forever touches me. When I was traveling to work on things for the divorce case, I remember on that day, everything was going wrong, like everything. I had a headache. I was so hungry. I hadn't eaten all day. I didn't get the results that I wanted from the court system. And I missed my flight, which was potentially going to get me in trouble with my work if I wasn't able to make it back on time. And I had it like I that that point I hit rock bottom again uh, I was just crying all in the airport I didn't care who saw me could have been you know President Obama whoever I would have just been still acting a mess I was leaning over the escalator crying my eyes out not worried about who was coming down the escalator next to me and something told me why don't you call one of your friends so I called one of my sweet sisters in Christ and I was just telling her about my day and she already knew the things that I was going through and I was just bawling my eyes out and I remember telling God Lord I'm so sorry for this bad attitude that I have I'm so sorry for complaining but please please heal my broken heart and take this pain away and I remember in that moment there was a wave of peace that instantaneously came over me. And experiencing the Holy Spirit in such a tangible, instantaneous way was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. And I can say God is good. Sometimes we have to go through those humbling experiences, those experiences that knock you off your feet in order for you to know how badly you need the Father. I had to experience that. And I can say that God is so good, so good. I didn't have to think about my shame anymore, my regrets, my guilt. God truly restored me and let me know that I was whole, that I was loved, that I was worthy, that I am worthy, that I am whole, that I am loved, not past tense, is present. And I can now say that I'm learning to walk in purpose in this life, knowing that I want to know the Father. I want to have a deep relationship with Him and with others to bring glory to His name.